Hi, my name is Maureen. This is Energy Medicine Yoga. Um, energy Medicine Yoga, the intention of it is to bring balance to the body. Um, it is a synthesis of its name. It is the synthesis of the ancient practice of yoga and energy medicine, uh, which is a basket term for a collection of ancient energy traditions. Uh, it's created by Lauren Walker and she was deeply influenced by Donna Eden. Uh, energy medicine. Um, let's see. How about we just start today with the simple question, what is energy? Energy is information that moves. Sweet, simple, short. Um, you know, it, it all comes down to energy. That's all that exists. We are completely made up of energy. Um, we are atoms oscillating at different speeds or frequencies, as is uh, our bodies, as is this mat, as is this block, as is this house. Um, as energy coagulates and gets denser and denser, it becomes our physical form, or it can get lighter and lighter and become subtle energy that um, becomes the air, which transfers everything. Um, I will weave in all sorts of um, vocabulary and um, movements that may or may not be familiar to you, and I just encourage you to keep an open mind and check in with how you feel at the beginning of practice and compare it to how you feel at the end of practice. All right, let's begin with Sukhasana, easy pose. Uh, that's the translation of the Sanskrit name. It's also referred to as the sweet spot. So it's finding a position, a seated position that you can sustain that is a combination of a dignified and erect posture and that has some ease for you. I encourage you to sit on a blanket. If you are tight in the hips, sit on many blankets. Uh, beach towels work are a nice substitute. You will need blocks for this pra practice or they're suggested. If you don't have yoga blocks, then um, pause the video and you can use a hard bound books um, that are going to be just as good for you to press into or um, a full toilet paper roll. All right, just rocking gently side to side, having a little bit of movement before we come into stillness. And when you're ready, I encourage you to take three deep breaths in and out. And as you're doing that, before you close your eyes, bring the tip of the index finger to touch the tip of the thumb. With palms facing up, let hands rest on your thighs. This is chin mudra, and it's connecting the energy cycle of lung and large intestine. The, those are two meridians that are related to the metal element, and metal is the element of letting go. One more deep breath in and deep breath out. Let the breath sweep your body, let the breath sweep through your mind. And then draw your attention inward by lowering your gaze or closing your eyes if you're comfortable. Focus your awareness on your body. Bring it compassion. Wherever it is, whatever's going on right now, bring it compassion. For as the saying goes, the body is already enlightened the mind needs to catch up. And I invite you to place um, one hand on top of the other at your heart. And we're going to begin the practice with a chant of Aum. It's the word, the sound, it's, it's the letters O and M. It is a symbolic. The sound is symbolic of our connection to one another and to the universe. Join in if you're comfortable, and I hope you will experiment with this, because we are vibrational beings. And with you creating the sound, you should be able to feel that resonate throughout your body. Uh, the practice is that you will exhale to clear the body, inhale deeply, and then you'll add the sound OM to your exhale for as long as your exhale lasts. As you're ready, exhale fully. Inhale deeply. Oh. Really 
release your hands to your thighs when you are finished. Open your eyes, hands come off to the side, palms face forward. Press down through your sit bones at the base of your spine, pull your belly in. Inhale, arms out wide for a couple of sun breaths. Let your arms match the length of your inhale, look up and turn your palms away and slowly exhale. Let your body warm up with this pose, add to it with the second and the third round. Inhale, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Reach up, look up, extend through the spine. And when you're ready to exhale, the palms face down. Last one. Inhale, really press down through the sit bones. Inhale, lift your arms. <clears throat> Reach up, look up, and turn your palms away and exhale, lower. And let that go and soften through everything. Let's do the Qigong version. Palms face down and all of your joints are soft. Your belly is soft. Um, just following right along. Inhale, halfway. Uh, exhale, turn your palms up. Inhale, arms up all the way. Exhale, index fingers and thumbs meet. Inhale, look up. Exhale, turn the palms down, bend at the elbows and slowly press down. Release and we'll do one more version of that or one more iteration of that. Soft, soft, soft joints. Inhale, arms up halfway. Exhale, palms face up. Inhale, arms up all the way. Exhale, index fingers and thumbs meet. Inhale, look up to receive. Exhale, rotate palms down. Bring it right down through your center. And release. Shake your hands out. Let's clear the gates of the hands. Remembering the uh, six meridians begin and end on the hand. Take an index finger and thumb and come between the bones of the finger. So you're starting at the wrists or wherever you can reach, tracing down through with a little bit of pressure and pinch off at the webbing. Going up the hand, going between the, the thin bones of the finger, tracing up until you get to the web, pinch off. Just a short, simple practice. Pinching off and then moving to the other hand. This is called clearing the gates of the hand to the degree that you can reach. It's not, it doesn't have to be exact. Moving up the hand and pinch off. Shake your hands off when you're done with that. Bring the hands to be interlaced in front of your body and pull the elbows together. So you might have to push those hands out a little farther. And now I want you to trace the figure eight as if it's lying on its side, but keep the elbows um, touching and really wake up the wrists and make that eight a little bit plumper, a little bit fatter, and then make it uh, eight a little bit longer. Just noticing the effect this is having on joints and on your side body, tracing the figure eight. And then let that go. Shake your hands out, shake your arms out. Bring your hands to uh, rest on your knees. Spread the, um, spread the hands out, palms face down. This is a Qigong crab crawl, and we'll integrate this with chair pose a little bit later, but just tune into the breath and the movements here as you draw index or you draw all your fingertips and your thumbs towards one another on an inhale push your wrist forward and inhale lift up then switch bend the bend the wrist palms face forward and slowly exhale back down remembering we are electromagnetic our hands carry a charge inhale draw fingertips and thumbs together push your wrist forward and inhale up a little taller our hands can move energy so tune in and release last one. Draw fingertips and thumbs together, push your wrists forward, bend them deeply and lift up as high as you can. And then reverse, face palms forward, bend deeply at the wrists and bring it down. And release and let that go. Extend your legs long and just pedal your feet, bend your knees. Let's do a foot massage. Bring the right ankle on top of the left knee. Uh, thumbs touch the sole of the foot beginning at the toes you're going to add pressure fingers will massage the top of the foot thumbs massage the bottom taking a special care when you get to um, this part of the sole of your foot it's uh, the base of the between the big toe and the second toe and uh, right underneath the ball of the foot this is the uh, only energy point on the sole of the foot the beginning of the kidney meridian so spending a little extra time there moving all the way down to the heel 
And then I want you to twist and pull each toe because six meridians begin and end uh, on the toes. So just twisting, pulling each toe, waking them up, spreading them out. Now spread them out as much as you can. And I'm going to challenge you to get the fingers inside the toes. A lot of good things happen here. So persevere and uh, work with your toes to, to you can get your fingers in there and then circle. If you can't get your fingers in there, no worries. Over time, uh, your feet will spread out. You could just uh, hold the top of your um, toes and just rotate the ankle both ways. All right, and then drum roll, bottom of the foot. And then clap, so top and bottom of the foot. Give it a little shake in the ankle and extend it long. Tune in. Does one leg feel different? Maybe, maybe not. Bring the left ankle on top of the right knee. Same thing, thumbs massage the sole of the foot, spending a little extra time at this um, kidney one energy point, uh, right at the base of the ball of the foot between the big toe and the, and the second toe. And keep massaging on down to the heel. Twist and turn and lift each toe. Try to keep your spine long as we do this, not caving in, but still building the muscles that hold the spine up nice and tall. Waking up the six meridians that begin and end on the toes, spread your toes, spread your fingers, and interlace them. Take the time to do this. If it hurts, then you don't have to. Uh, just working that every day. We want to keep adding space to our feet. The more real estate that is connected to the ground, the more balanced we are. Going the other direction with your ankle circles. And then drum roll the bottom of the foot. Clap. Bottom of the foot. Make some noise. Let people in the house wonder what you're up to. Shake the ankle and send it long. Now, when you come back to Sukhasana, put your second favorite leg forward, which should feel a little bit awkward. Yoga likes to interrupt patterns. Uh, press down through sit bones, draw your core in and inhale, lift your arms up and reach up. And now I want you to twist to the right, but let your torso lead the way. So twist as far as you can and then float the arms down Press down through your hands, inhale, lift up through your spine, and exhale, twist a little deeper. Hold the pose, but let your breath still move. And then inhale to center and release. Press down again, establish your connection, and inhale up tall. Twist with your torso to the left as far as you can, and then let the arms float down. Press down through the arms, inhale, lift up through the spine, and exhale, twist a little deeper. Keep drawing your belly in toward the spine. Keep breathing, but hold the pose. And then release, inhale forward, let it go. Before we um, come to standing, I just wanted to do the Celtic weave. I want to remind you that it's a soft bend in the wrists and it's like that lying down figure eight, not an upright figure eight, and your wrists cross. And you can alternate which one comes above and which one comes below, all right? So we're gonna lift the arms up overhead and bring the uh, wrists back down to our hips. Inhale, lift up high, Celtic weave. Alternate which wrist is above and below. Let everything soften through these joints. And now we'll twist to the right. And inhale, lift your arms up and Celtic weave down the right side of your body. Making figure eights is very good for your energy system. Turning, twisting to the left, inhale up, tracing figure eights, moving with your energy, not against it. And release and let it go. Come to standing. Let's do the energy uh, medicine yoga wake up. It's a couple minutes and it takes a different breath um, pattern. You breathe in through the nose for this and out through the mouth. That's the hardest thing to remember. I'll be guiding you what you're doing with your hands, but try to tune in. That's your breath pattern. We are clearing out stagnant energy. Bring two fingers to meet the thumbs. Find where your collarbones almost meet. Come down an inch and out an inch, and you should kind of feel that there's a little indentation there. And then begin tapping vigorously as you breathe in through the nose and breathe out through the mouth. Make it audible. Tap vigorously, this should make some noise. This is tapping at the end of the kidney meridian. Uh, we started at the bottom, the kidney one, this is kidney 27. So tapping here activates 
all of your energetics meridians. Uh, very good thing to do at the beginning of the day. Uh, take one hand and now move to the center of the sternum, which starts at the breastbone and ends at the collarbone. And just tapping one hand, trying to find the middle of it, it should sound hollow. Tapping here is related to the thymus gland in Chinese medicine, and it's an immune boost. Next is uh, tapping at the upper side ribs. You can use the inside of a fist, those big fingers, or if it's tender, then just circle. Don't avoid it if it's tender. That's ind indicative of energy being stuck there. Breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth. This is the end of the spleen meridian, and it's all about metabolism. Last of the tapping is this orbital bone underneath your eye, delicate area, so just rolling three fingers, uh, lightly on the bone, not on the soft flesh. This is the beginning of the stomach meridian, and it is very grounding for the energy you have just let go. And shake your hands off. Turn your palms down and bring them in front of the body, and then lift the same knee to touch the same hand just a couple of times. Energy wants to move. Energy needs space to move. That's why we do yoga, to create space in our body. Dust your hands off. That's the homolateral pattern. Shake it off. The pattern that the body prefers is this crossover pattern. So depending upon how you feel, this can be as um, low key, and you just tap a big toe and tap the upper thigh, or you can uh, add a twist. Just notice that you're crossing the midline of the body. This is the way that we walk. We're just adding a little bit of flair to it. You could add to it by touching the ankle. And likewise, you could add to it by touching behind your body. Breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth, and release and let it go. Bring your hands to the base of the body. They can hover or you can touch. Um, go ahead and set an intention. I don't believe I invited you to set an intention. But when I um, ask you to do that, what comes to mind? What pops, cops, uh, pops into your mind? Uh, an intention is a single word, a characteristic, an aspiration, something you want more of. Could be a single word of peace. All right, and then on an inhale, you'll draw your fingertips, the breath, and your intention up through the central meridian. Up, overhead, turn your palms away, and exhale, smooth it out. This helps you to embody your intention. Inhale, draw fingertips, the breath, and your intention. Up. Exhale, smooth it out. Last one. Inhale, breath, intention, and your fingertips up through the meridian. Exhale, smooth it out. And we finish this energy medicine yoga. Wake up with one hand on your navel, one hand, I'm sorry, one fingertip um, on the navel, one fingertip at, at your forehead. Lightly press in and lift up as you breathe in through the nose. And breathe out through the mouth. This is uh, connecting your central meridian with your governing meridian like a circuit, amplifying this energy. And release and let it go. Take your feet wide, heels in, toes out, hands at your heart. We're coming into Malasana, a squat. Take a breath in and exhale, sink into your squat and just meet your body where it's at. If you need to stop at a higher uh, height, do so. If you have a lot of flexibility and you can sink down low, then come into this pose where it feels all right for you. But still keep lifting up from pelvic floor to navel to sternum. Keep active. Press elbows into knees, lift your heart and lift your gaze. Try to keep that spine nice and long. And then hands to, uh, come to the floor on spider fingertips. And I want you to bow. And I want you to feel this lengthening from tailbone through to crown of the head, opening up in the back of the neck. Just take it as far down as feels all right for you. And now we will transition to standing. So hands touch the ground as you lengthen up through the legs and heel toe feet to be in alignment with your hips. Keep a little bend in the knees as your hamstrings are still waking up, but let your upper body be heavy. Grab opposite elbows. This is the hang, where you let the upper body hang off of the hips. Let the head be heavy. To encourage this, you can sway side to side. And this passively helps your low back open, helps the hamstrings back of your legs, and it helps your shoulders to open. 
And now release the elbows and let your hands interlace at your sacrum on your low back and begin to lift the hands away, lifting them as far away from the body as your shoulders allow and let gravity open the shoulders. Your knees can still maintain a bend or if your hamstrings are warming up, you can lengthen through the legs, but this is really about a shoulder opening. And then gradually bring the hands back to your sacrum and let the palms touch your sacrum. Deeply bend in the knees. Keep your back nice and straight. Keep elbows pointing back as you come into chair pose. Try to pull your belly towards your spine and lift your heart up as your gaze is forward of your mat. And this, your hands are now touching the main men point. It's also called the life gate. Um, it's one of the most powerful energy points of the body. So you just circle it. You can go either direction. And then extend your arms long and try to encourage your spine to be long like the arms. Hold the belly to the spine, lift the heart up, and then press up into standing. Hands meet at your heart and find Tadasana. Your feet are hips width distance apart. Your legs are active, your core is active. And we're gonna sink back into chair pose and add that Qigong crab crawl. <clears throat> so as you're ready, sink into chair pose and find that alignment. So your knees are parallel. You should be able to see your big toe. Draw the belly towards the spine. Lift the heart up, broad collarbones, and hands rest on your knees, palms face down, hands spread out. Draw the fingertips towards the thumbs, push the wrists forward, and inhale the arms up while you maintain chair pose and then flip at the wrists and exhale. Let your uh, hands and arms match your breath cycle. Inhale, draw fingertips towards the thumbs, fill up and lift the arms up a little higher and then flip the wrists. There's a little soft bend in your elbows. Try to lengthen that exhale to help you maintain cha chair pose. Last one, inhale, push your wrists forward, Lift those arms up as high as you can and exhale, slowly lower. Release and come to standing, Woo! shake it out. Nice big deep breath in, nice big deep breath out. And let's do some sun salutations. Turn that off. <laughs> Sorry. Um, sun salutations, if you have blocks, use the blocks. Sun salutations are a great way to um, organize all of our energy systems and get our energy moving in the right direction. So blocks are at the top of your mat. If you don't have uh, blocks, you don't have to, you can adapt. Standing in mountain pose, feet are hips with distance apart, legs are active, core is engaged, tailbone points down, Roll shoulders up to your ears, shoulder blades glide down your back, palms face forward. Inhale, arms out wide and up high. Look up and reach up, Urdhva Stasana. Turn your palms away, hinge at the hips, and exhale, coming forward into your bow, your Uttanasana. Lift up through the hips and point the crown of the head down. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana, hands on knees. Pull your belly to your spine, pull shoulder blades together, and reach forward with the crown of your head. Exhale back to your forward fold. If you're using blocks, they can frame your feet as you step the right foot back, straight leg lunge. Sink your hips, lift your heart, lift your gaze. Be light on your fingers. And then remove blocks if you're using them and step back, downward facing dog. As you come into this pose, do any type of warm-up that your body is asking for. It might mean deeply bending both knees and lengthening them, or taking one heel to the ground and bending the opposite knee. And just taking a, a few moments to warm the body up in this pose. Be sure to spread your hands out, spread your fingers out wide like a starfish, and press into the index finger and thumb. And then find some stillness. And then on your next inhale, shift forward into plank. 
and try to make a line with your body. Squeeze the muscles of your body, draw all your energy to your midline, strong shoulders, press your heels back, and then you decide, do knees touch the ground to lower in half plank or lower in full plank? Release and press down through the lower half of your body to inhale, lift your heart. Let your back work here for baby cobra. Exhale, lower, tuck your toes, inhale up to table, and exhale, lift up, downward facing dog, and sense the circle, sense the cycle. As you move through poses, repeat them and finish off the circle. Breathing here in downward facing dog as you keep deepening in the posture. On your next inhale, right leg rises long behind you. Exhale, bend the knee, pull it toward your ribs, and step it forward. Take your time. Find the straight leg lunge as you lower your hips, lift your heart, and be light on your fingers. And then press off back foot, then join the front foot. You're back in Uttanasana, forward fold. Just taking a breath in and a breath out here. And bring your hands to your hips, which will help you keep a straight spine, hopefully. Draw your belly to your spine and inhale, lift the torso. Arms sweep out wide, look up high, Urdhva Sasana. Hands touch, exhale to your heart and release the hands to your sides as you take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And we continue, inhale, arms up overhead. Look up at your thumbs for a little back bend. Turn your palms away and exhale, bow. Coming into Uttanasana, feel the backs of your hamstrings, the backs of your legs, your hamstrings warm up, point the crown of the head down. Inhale, lift up halfway, long legs, long spine, long arms, pull your belly to your spine, pull shoulder blades down your back and reach the crown of your head forward. This is half forward fold. Exhale, back, down to forward fold and step the left foot back. Straight leg lunge, open up the hips, sink the weight of the hips, and then step back, downward facing dog, and slow it down. Staying here for a couple breaths as you pull your ribs towards your thighs, press the weight of your hips back, lower those heels just a little bit, and quiet the heart rate. On your next inhale, shift forward to plank. Draw your belly up, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your legs, strong broad shoulders. Try to create a line with your body. Who knows if you are or aren't. Uh, it's a more about your perception of your body in space. And we exhale lower, keep elbows close to ribs, half plank or full plank lower, release. Top, uh, let's see, the lower half of the body presses into the ground. As you inhale, and perhaps you extend the arms this time for full cobra, lift your chin. Just tune into your back, exhale lower. And tuck your toes, and we meet in downward facing dog. You can come up through table or come up through plank, but come a little deeper in your downward facing dog and breathe. Slow your heart rate. On your next inhale, the left leg will rise long behind you, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend the knee, pull it to your ribs, and step it forward. Straight leg lunge, sink the weight of the hips, lift the heart, lift your gaze, light fingers, and then press off back foot to join front foot. Uttanasana, take an extra breath here. Lift the hips, point the crown of the head down. And this time we'll reverse swan dive arms out wide. Pull your belly to your spine. Keep your spine nice and long. As you inhale, arms out wide, up high. Look up at your thumbs for a back bend. Hands touch. Exhale to your heart. And release. And let it go. Just give your body a little shake. Breath in. Breath out. I'm going to do the yin yang meridian clear. We did this in the last class. If it's not familiar to you, just listen and tune in and feel. So stand in mountain pose. Inhale, <clears throat> arms out wide and up high. I'm not gonna, <clears throat> excuse me. 
<clears throat> I'm not going to mirror you here. I'm just going to use my right hand. My right hand sits on top of my left hand and lightly trace down the outsides of the arms, the shoulders, the ribs, pull across the belt meridian and then hands on your hips and press down your outer legs. This is the yawn energy that comes down the body and the, down the outside of the body. Sweep off the pinky toe and shake off. And then two fingers um, touch the inside of the big toe and you just draw up the inside of the foot, the calf. This is drawing up yin energy which comes up the body and usually on the inside lines, flare out of the hip crease, trace up the side ribs to the armpits and then back down to that spot that we were tapping uh, earlier at the end of the spleen meridian. Now we'll repeat and use the left hand. Inhale, arms out wide. This time the left hand sits on top of the right. Think about yawn energy coming down from the sky, from the sun, trace down. Then we move in the direction of these meridians, pull across the belt meridian. We increase their strength and we increase their directionality. Sweeping down off the outside, off the pinky toe, two fingers come inside the big toe, trace up the inside of the foot, inside the calf, inside the thighs, flare out of the hip crease, up the side ribs to the armpit, and end in circle. Last one, inhale, arms up high. Your hands will meet <clears throat> and tent. Fingertips and thumbs touch, palms pull away from each other. And exhale, thumb touches your heart. Index fingers touch where the collarbones almost meet. This is triple warmer mudra. I encourage you to breathe in deeply here and breathe out and keep that breath cycle going as I explained to you that this is connecting the heart chakra to the throat chakra, strengthening communication. And you know, anytime you're connecting this, uh, it's like a circuit, it amplifies the energy. One more breath in and out. And release and let it go. Let's check in our time. Uh, our balance pose is uh, repeating what we did last week with tree pose with the triple warmer mudra hold. So let's establish the arms. If binding the arms in tree pose is not working for you for balance, then don't hold the bind. You can come into the typical tree pose or even hold your arms out wide for better balance. If you'd like to do the triple warmer bind, your now I will mirror you. Um, your right hand touches your left ribs and your left hand touches above the elbow. And let this, um, don't let this make you curl forward. Uh, still lift your heart up and lengthen through your spine and broaden through your collarbones. Shift your weight to the right leg. Be light on the left. Shift your weight to the right. Uh, draw the knee away from the midline and check in. You've got the ball of the foot as a choice. You've got the big toe touching the ground. Always the heel is touching your standing leg. You can come into a single leg balance at the calf or with assistance, come to the upper inner thigh, just never on the knee because I want you to press the bent uh, leg foot into the standing leg. Once you're established and you found a drishti, a place for your eyes, a static point on the wall, I want you to keep the tension in your lower body, keep the tension in your core, light squeeze of the glutes, and then try to lift up through the heart. Try to lift up through the spine. Pull shoulder blades together and down your back. And breathe. And if you want to add a challenge to it, you change your arm position. Because any change in movement will challenge your balance. And eventually you bring it to your center. Bring hands to your center and release your pose. And really shake it out. Let everything go loose and soft and fluid. Because balance poses, we squeeze everything together. And sometimes we stop breathing or we forget to let go. So let's get just as good at letting go and getting out of a pose as we put attention into getting there. To move to the other side now, our left leg will be our standing leg. So sweep the left arm around to the right ribs. And right arm, right hand touches above that elbow. Try to straighten up through the spine and lift up through your heart. Rather than curling forward, shift your weight to the left leg, light on your right. Draw the knee away from the midline and choose. Choose what is working for you today. Each side is different and you won't know until you experiment. And if you fall out of the pose, 
well, good for you. You did it trying. Um, find that drishti. The eyes provide quite a bit of feedback for balance poses. Add the tension of the bent leg foot pressing into the standing leg. Firm lower body, firm core, firm glutes. And then breathe. Breathe and try to lengthen up tall through your spine. Maybe this time lift up through the crown of the head. Lift your heart up, pull your shoulder blades on, together on your back and wobble. Trees wobble in the wind. The wobbling makes you stronger. You can add the challenge of changing your arm position and eventually we'll bring hands to our center and release the pose and we'll flow. Uh, release, release, release. Uh, we'll just add in um, uh, some a wide legged stance to transition down to our um, final poses, our warm down poses. So step wide. Remember that a gauge for how wide you can stand is if you extend your arms, bend your wrist and drop the line like a drop plumb line from the wrists. That's how far apart you can stand and sustain it. If it doesn't feel good and you'd rather stand a little closer, then meet your body where it's at. Feet are parallel. If you need to bend the knees uh, for tight hamstrings or tight groins, do so. Hands at your hips, keep the spine nice and long as you inhale, lift up, and exhale, hinge at the hips. And just feel this um, in your spine and in your legs. Let your hands drop uh, below the shoulders. If they don't touch the ground, this is where a block can come in handy, or a towel, or the uh, book. If you can reach the ground, then I, I, I encourage you to make sure that you're pulling your shoulder blades together down your back, that your head stays in alignment with your spine. It's not grouping down right now. And you just check in with these hand, uh, inner groins and back hamstrings. Really press down through the pinky toe, through the outside pinky toe and through the big toe to help stabilize you. Now walk your hands forward. Keep your hips where they're at. But walk your hands forward and check and see how this is a modification of downward facing dog. It just adds a little space between the spinal vertebrae. Walk your hands back underneath your shoulders. And now we will bow. We will round the spine and bow the head forward. I encourage you to take your hands out to your calves or your ankles. Or you might grab the big toe with the index finger and thumb. Let the um, elbows bend and sort of pull your torso down. Just see about that tension, what works What was works for you. The crown of the head is moving to point down toward the ground and breathe into this opening. And then release and bring hands um, back underneath shoulders and arms long. Hands come to the hips, bend the knees slightly and stand up and heel toe. Heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. Just march in place and let that go. And then come onto your back. We're gonna do moving bridge. If you do have a block, have it nearby. After moving bridge, we'll do supported bridge. So if you don't have a block, then you could uh, fold a, uh, the, the towel to be that support. And we'll go underneath your sacrum. So come on down to your back. Let your elbows support you as you go down and bend your knees uh, when you get there. And just take a breath here in constructive rest with palms facing up, knees bent. And just tune in to how your energy shifts to move from standing to an inversion <clears throat> to standing now down to supine. All right, to prepare for bridge pose. Um, bring the heels a little closer to your sit bones, palms press down. Let's just see if I can cut that off. <laughs> and we'll uh, press down through feet, press down through hands and forearms, and inhale, lift your hips up. And really sense that your weight is coming onto the uh, upper back shoulders, and then lift your arms up to meet hips. Let the arms point up toward the ceiling and eventually lift overhead, touch the ground. Exhale, bring the arms back to hips. 
and lower arms and hips together. Moving bridge. Now we'll do it together. Press down through feet, lift arms and hips. Extend the hips up as high as you can and let the arms just keep moving. Overhead, that's your inhale. And when you're ready to exhale, the arms reverse. When the arms meet the hips, everything lowers. And let it go. Breath in, breath out. Uh, bring the block now or this rolled blanket. And the invitation is to place it underneath the sacrum. It's not at your um, waist. It is below your waist. The sacrum is like an upside down triangle, the base of your spine. And it should feel nice. Really let your weight of the hips rest on this support, whether it's a rolled towel, a book, or a block. This is a restorative pose. And it's lifting uh, the heart slightly above the head. And inversions have um, multiple layers of benefits. Just letting the breath move through you. Letting the weight be supported fully by the block. And then lift your hips up and remove the block. Um, uh, before we head into the final pose of Shavasana, I have uh, one last energy medicine. Hold. Um, place the palm of the right hand underneath the base, not the base of the skull, the, the center back of the skull. Uh, um, basically behind your eyes. And then let the palm of the left hand um, lay across your entire forehead, so horizontally. Your pinky finger is uh, around the eyebrows and your index finger is around the hairline. And these hands in these two positions are um, touching several key energy points. They're very calming. So you just breathe here. You're welcome to extend the legs long if that's more comfortable or you can keep the knees bent. This is sort of preparation for Shavasana. You're touching the neurovascular points uh, across several different meridians and you're connecting it to the circulatory system, which is very re relaxing. You're welcome to keep your hands in this position and bring your body into um, the, just the full extension for Shavasana. Or you can release the hold at any time and take the traditional position of Shavasana, which is uh, you walk the legs or the heels out to the either corner of the bottom of your mat and feet flop open. The arms are traditionally 10 to 12 inches away from the body at the hips with palms facing up. And you hold here in stillness and in silence with no instructions except to release control, to release effort. And I'll bring you back to attention with the ring of the bell.
breathing in all the sounds, focusing on yourself, listening as it begins and as it dissipates. And I invite you to deepen your breath and bring your awareness back to your senses. As you add small movement to fingers and bend the wrists, wiggle your toes, roll your ankles. And as you're ready, move in any way that feels good to your body. That might mean a full body lengthening or it might mean pulling your knees into your chest and rocking. Just let your body lead. Take your time. Eventually, everyone will bend their knees and roll to one side and just pause there a moment. Just linger here. Perhaps an elbow supports your head and neck and then you pull those bent knees a little closer to your head and recognize this as the fetal position. Just really tuning in, tuning into the language of your body, turning in, tuning into the language of energy. And just checking in, how do you feel? And when you're ready, press off with your hand and your elbow. And bring yourself upright. Coming back to a version of Sukhasana, a seated pose where you have a balance of ease and effort, keeping your attention inward, your eyes lowered. Let your hands come together at your heart in Andrale Mudra. I share a quote. This is from Albert St. Georgi. He won the Nobel Prize in um, chemistry. He said, in every culture and in every medical tradition before ours, healing was accomplished by moving energy. And again, you could place one hand on top of the other, resting on your heart as we seal this practice with a chant of Aum. Or you can keep your hands in Anjali Mudra. And just really tune in to see if you can feel that vibration resonate throughout your body. Exhale fully. Inhale deeply. Aum. Bring your thumbs up to touch your forehead. This is your third eye. And join me as we offer each other this greeting of Namaste, a Sanskrit word, which means all the light in me sees all the very same light in each one of you. Namaste. Thank you for your practice. Um, I just want to share that I also lead a restorative yoga class. Um, we do a little bit of uh, energy flow work, a little vinyasa to shake off our energy, and then we move right into um, mostly restorative yoga poses. So check it out. Um, and if not, I'll see you next week. <laughs>